What's up everybody? This is Kara with Cultures for Health, and today we are bringing you another discussion about sourdough. On the last episode, we talked all about sourdough discard with Josh Axler, and this week we speak with another home baker, Asher Jordan, who some of you may know as the Sourdough Dude on Instagram. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to tell you about the Cultures for Health 2022 New Year giveaway. We are giving away our brand new Holiday Spice and Cranberry Kombucha Kit and Live Kombucha Starter Culture Bundle, along with our Artisan Sourdough Kit. To enter, you can click the link below or find it on our Instagram or Facebook page. Okay, let's get into some sourdough with the Sourdough Dude. So, Sourdough Dude, Ashley Jordan, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your journey, how you found yourself in sourdough, how you ended up here today, all of it. Yeah, for sure. What's up, y'all? Um, yeah, I'm Asher. I, which already feels weird because it's like I've been the sourdough dude for several years now, and I'm only now really starting to put Asher into the mix. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me because, like, I don't know. I feel like I go live once every three months, and then nobody ever hears from me, and I just post my bread. But. Uh, I've always loved bread, man. I mean, who, who, who it's bread, right? It's incredible. Right. <laughs> um, it's Same. super incredible. Um, my yes. parents decided when they had me, they decided to, our whole family was going to be vegetarian, um, which is cool. I mean, like, do you do whatever you want with your family? I will say, uh, 30 years later, uh, I've gone to the doctor, you know, cause I never, I've truly never ate meat, right. For like 25 years. And then when I tried to start putting it in my diet, like, turns out that ain't that ain't possible. So, you know, maybe let your kid try meat. But the point is, is we ate a lot of bread in my household. Right. Um, and I also grew up super poor. And uh, my dad worked in the grocery like industry. And this was this was years ago. This was before Trader Joe's. And he was the manager of like the only natural food grocery store in in a big major metropolitan city uh and so i was five you know working work, working behind the register right because it's the 90s and you know i'm the the manager's kid and this this grocery store had a juice bar right that was like a because again yeah this is before <laughs> this is before whole foods this is before all this right and so if you wanted like a a juice, like a good, you know, like you can get now, mm-hmm. you could only go to the, this grocery store. And their thing was that they got the essential bakery sourdough bread delivered to the store every day, you know, an hour after it came out of the oven. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'd be five, you know, at 5 a.m. at the grocery store, eating my slice of sourdough bread and my carrot juice for breakfast. Yeah. Right. Because that's that's what you do if you're poor on a Saturday. Everyone's at work. So you are too, you know? And uh, I mean, not so much anymore, maybe, but like, that's what it was. So flash forward 20 years. um, I'm out of college. I've got an acting degree that, you know, (laughs) that didn't work out immediately. So I'm like in the throes of that. And I'm living in this like group house with a bunch of dudes. And the only grocery store that we live by was this super like, cater to rich people grocery store and the they had sourdough there and it was that same sourdough from the essential baking company and it was like you know 9.99 a loaf which is overall not that much for like a good loaf of bread but for a loaf of essential bakery sourdough from a store at 6 Mm p.m eight or more hours after it came out of the oven it's like that's 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 that doesn't work especially if you're Mm -hmm. living in a house that you're living in because it's going to be condemned soon and so you can afford to live there, right? Yeah. And so I was like, if I want this comforting thing from my, because I was working like 55 hour weeks and stuff. Yes, if, I, yeah. if I want this comforting thing from my childhood, I'm going to have to make it myself. And, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, that's just indicative of my neuroses and my crazy life. But we all do that, right? When you're mm-hmm. in the throes of oh, yeah. working a lot or stress, you want something that's, you know, that's, that feels close, close, right? Yeah. Feels warm oh, and yeah. safe and happy and makes you feel good. Mind you, and I was stuff. like, yeah, yeah, I was longing for it. And so I, I was like, okay, I, I, I put some flour and water in a jar and stuck it in the closet. And that is still my starter. Oh, like, yeah. I just, I just committed. 
Uh, I guess that was 2017. So what is it? Yeah. It's it's uh, it just turned four. four years. It was December 1st. It was December wow. 1st. Because I was, you know, again, it's like when you're working 55 hour weeks and then the, the mm -hmm. holidays, all of them start hitting late November, December, right? It doesn't matter what you celebrate, right? If you're working that much during all these times when everyone's celebrating different things, you start mm -hmm. to like lose it, right? You're like, ah, ah, yeah. right? You need something. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I just decided to dive into bread. And that's, I mean, that's how I got, that's how it, it literally started there. It's just been going. Like it's just been going and going and going. I didn't mean for it to get this way, like thousands of followers and become the bread guy. But here we are. Yeah, here you are. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy, like I'm super excited for it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That's really cool. Did you um when you first started, so you said you kind of just like went for it. Did you have like did you do any research? Did you have any former knowledge, any education, or did you really just like, I'm not gonna like look this up. I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to do it and see what happens. Like, what was your, I guess, what was your thought process when you're like, I'm going to do it. And then how did you do it? Like, how did you, you know, you said four years ago, but like, yeah, picking well, up bread for the first time and like doing it is very different from the Instagram yes. photos that we see today. Right. So tell it's us a little bit is. about that process. Um, it's, there's a couple parts of it. One is that I didn't start from from zero because mm -hmm. uh my dad was a pizza guy in his like late teens and 20s mm -hmm. um shocker you know it's like if you know it's it well this is america man you know right. poor people come from poor people so when he was a teenager yeah. and stuff he was already working making pizza and he taught me basics of dough fundamentals and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. and that's a lot of the important stuff like if you Absolutely. get taught how to handle dough growing up mm -hmm. that's a big step that you don't have to learn when you get into it like when mm -hmm. i was a teenager you know and like you you do what teenagers do right you, my party trick after we'd all gone and done what teenagers do is i would like make a big sheet pan pizza and everyone would be like oh my god you know it's like you're so cool right? yeah, yeah, i mean yeah, that's, I am. <laughs> so I, in a ponytail and i was into drama that's all i had i was like food sure. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> later, right. So, um, you know, so I, I did have like I had some super basic building blocks. Mm -hmm. Um, I got I got a there were some people that were really in my corner when I was growing up. Um, and mm -hmm. I wound up getting a, a scholarship to NYU to study acting and um specifically at like a very a a, a pretty selective program there that's like very hardcore like you, you've seen the old movies where they got the ballerinas up on blocks and they're like pushing them down into the splits right. and they're all screaming that happened to me like that's real like that's <laughs> yeah. that's still a real thing if you go to like the real high levels of art training that's that's mm -hmm. still how it's done ain't ain't no other way to get you to stretch more after a certain point right mm -hmm. and so i've got this hardcore process-based mentality that's been driven into me from 10 years of acting professionally and, you know, five, six years of training really hardcore as, as a performer. And like, when you get to that level of training for art, it becomes very eerily similar to like militaristic training. It's, it's very structured and rhythmic and, you know, it's a lot of go forward and you put the blinders on. So when I decided I wanted to, baked sourdough, I knew from the jump that my bread wasn't going to look anything like what I was seeing on Instagram. I knew it was going to be a multi-year process before I was going to get to a point that it was really good. And I knew it was probably going to be a multi-month or year process to get to the point where it was even passable, right? Mm -hmm. So the the like learning process for me was much more enjoyable because I was never at a point of like, why isn't this working? Every time I screwed something up or it didn't turn out, I was like, yeah, that's that's how that's what I would expect. I failed. <laughs> that's where right. you learn. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so really, I just I started consuming everything. I would go to the library, go to the baking section, find the row of books on bread. There'd only be like, what, 10, 12 for library. Yeah. That's not that many books. I just check right. them all out and just, just, <laughs> just read through them. I mean, come on, man. Like, what do you got? You got a subway ride or a bus ride or you, you know, you, everyone's got to sit down in the bathroom sooner or later. You got time to read a chapter of a book, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so I would just do it whenever I had half an hour. And so I read everything, you know, and I mean, I wrote down some because I know this is a question people want the answer to, like Vanessa Kimball's books, right? Oh, yes. Incredibly informative. Um, mm -hmm. Brian Ford, right? New World Sourdough. Yeah. Incredibly informative. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Jim Leahy, right? Everyone mm -hmm. knows no need bread, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fun fact, the the that I learned the other day, that no need bread recipe on the back of all of Bob's Red Mill flowers, that's mm -hmm. Jim Leahy's recipe. Oh, and, no and, way. And, and he ain't credited. He ain't credited. I didn't know he, that. he yeah, and nothing against Bob's Red Mill. I mean, it's a big old company, right? But right. like it was like apparently years ago he offered them the recipe and they were like, nah, nah, nah. And it's like now it's been on their bags ever since. So it's like, hey. Mm -hmm. Got to give the give that guy some credit. He's been putting yeah. in work for decades for the bread right. community, mm -hmm. right? Other people, yeah, sure. you know, Maurizio's blog, every you know that mm -hmm. Trevor J. Wilson, Mike from Rose Hill mm -hmm. Sourdough. He's been a good friend from like the jump. He would he mm -hmm. was on Instagram uh, like a little earlier than I was, and he and I, you know, for years have like he's he's been like one of the rocks on That's bread awesome. Instagram for me. But there's just so many so many resources and people that mm -hmm. it should be clear that there's no one way to do this. So, right. And there's no right way to do it either. Yeah. It's whatever works best for you. Right. So I, mean, I would just consume it all. Yeah, I mean, like all of those books you just named and all of those Instagrams, like I have and I follow, you know, I, I recognize all of yep. those. And I think, I think like that's where- um, can I, Sorry, can I throw one more really important one in there? That I, yes. Bisham the Baker, he's, super important super mm -hmm. important sorry that <laughs> no that's a good one i can't it. forget just that say it. sorry yeah. <laughs> no, no, definitely bad. no no it's all good i think i think it's important for people to hear the names because i think i think sometimes like people don't know where to start where to turn what books to look at you know there's so many books out there that sometimes it's like hard to say are they good are they bad is there really a bad book out there or do, do all of them teach us something um I think it all kind of just contributes to the journey. You know, like you said, your journey was a couple years of you figuring out like, oh, this is not going to be great. This is going to be passable. And I think that's where a lot of fermenters struggle is like not just in sourdough in general or not just in sourdough, but in general, I think people get dissuaded from trying it when it doesn't turn out like a look that you have on your Instagram, you know, with like the perfect, beautiful ear. I think that discourages people from, from that journey. So it's really nice, like having people like you on our podcast and hearing that, you know, like you knew for the first year or two years or few years, whatever that may look like that, um, that yeah, it's not going to turn out. It's nowhere near perfect. That's the thing. Oh, and weird I'm, loaves come out all the time. Like you can think oh, you're doing it all right and you still get a weirdo occasionally. Yep. Yeah. Like my absolutely. bread is consistent. That's mm -hmm. the thing, right? That's that's a that's a big thing, right? Is wow. there's and again, not knocking anyone's language here. I mean, we've been recording for 15 minutes and I've yacked about three random things that have nothing to do with <laughs> bread, right? So I I know, like nobody, mm -hmm. I don't want anyone listening to not to think I don't know that I go on and on randomly off of one little question, but like, you know, everyone thinks about things in the language that you're, you know, priming yourself for. I think about mm -hmm. things in 39 sentences. Some people think about <laughs> conceptualized things and I want to reach perfection. And that's mm -hmm. awesome too, right? I think about things as just a crazy evolving mass of whatever's going on is going on because I'm a crazy mm -hmm. person that's always going on, right? But mm -hmm. like, I always wanted to reach consistency. And that's mm -hmm. where I feel that I've gotten with my bread is I pump out consistent bread. But there are so many things that I would want to change about my bread because I got I want to. Right. And I, I think you made a super good point, And I very much agree with you at times, you know, especially starting out, it can feel both intimidating because there's mm -hmm. so much information, but also discouraging because there's so much there are so many clear results of finished products out there that you are looking at. And like, that's a big deal is you can't ever compare your own work to a fin to someone else's finished product. You can compare your finished product to the, their finished product. You probably mm -hmm. shouldn't all the time, right? Definitely. But you can, yeah. you can compare mm -hmm. your process to someone's process. And that's probably more helpful because you can think about how there's differs 
and how yours differs and how one might help or complement the other. But you can't compare your process, your learning to someone else's finished thing, right? right? Because that's two separate things. That would be like if I went to a pottery class and then I went and watched like a documentary on pottery and wrote an essay uh, critiquing, you know, all of their work. And it's like, I might have a couple of right points, but like, I'm, I'm coming at it from a different place than the people mm -hmm. who have, you know, done that. So what you can do is you can look at people whose work you admire that you think is perfect. Like I think Dan Larn's account is perfect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I, I admire his bread so much. Every loaf he scores, every loaf he posts, I'm like, that is perfect, right? Mm -hmm. He probably disagrees, but yeah. I think it's perfect, right? And mm -hmm. so there's value in that because I, I look at his bread and I can identify what experienced, masterful results look like. So I can just be aware of when my process is generating things that are similar, right. right? And that's different than going, my loaf is as good as it as this guy's this time. My loaf is worse than this lady's this time. It's like, mm -hmm. that's, that's not what we're doing here. We're going, oh, okay. So this time I, you know, whatever, did blank and it looks like Dan's loaf. I'm gonna try mm -hmm. that again and see if I can replicate it. Now I'm gonna try it again in a way that feels more comfortable to me and see if I can replicate it. Now I'm mm -hmm. gonna find the middle ground. So like, you know, at the end of the day, I think my real answer to your question of like, how did I teach myself to bake sourdough is the same way as everybody else has and is on Instagram, you know, who's not a, a working in a bakery. I, I figured it out, you know, and it was hard. And it took looking at a lot of people's bread and talking to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And eventually we got here, you know, it's like, ain't no magic trick. And it, no was, worth it. And yeah. it was super worth it. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop, right? For real though. No, for real. <laughs> yeah. Um, or can't stop, can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the sourdough keeps going without you. I can't stop, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> um. So do you have any advice to people who are looking to start the journey are a little bit nervous maybe to reach out to like someone like you and ask for advice help helpful thoughts opinions anything like that like for those people who are feeling defeated and are you know or do struggle to start the first first batch because they hear oh that's hard work i'm not going to get into hard work i don't have time for hard work i have a day job like what is your advice that, you know, I think um, we did, we talked to Sandra Katz a little while ago and we talked about um, incorporating fermentation into your everyday life. And that's, that's one of the things that I ask everyone is because I think it's really important. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with and especially something like sourdough baking, um, you know, where like it, it can be an involved process at times, you know, like you kind of like you're involved at one minute and then you let it go for hours and then you're really involved again. So how do you like, what's your advice to people who are a little bit worried to get started, maybe got started and aren't seeing the Instagram results, but want to know how they can get there. Maybe are afraid to reach out to someone like you or like the Rose Hill account, you know, which has been around forever. And it's like a great staple, you know, all of those, all, all of these beautiful accounts that are putting out beautiful loaves and they just feel like really discouraged. What is your, um, what's your thought? What's your advice to, to those people? Well, first of all, I mean, hit me up, like, like for real, I will, I will respond. The only thing that I won't like immediately look at and respond to is if you just send me like a picture of your bread and go, <laughs> what did I do wrong? It's, I don't know. Like, what, what do you want it to be different? Like, that's, that's mm. like, I don't know. I'm not, I, I, I'm not eating your bread. you know, it's like, but if, if you right. have a question and you like, and you are, are, you know, because yeah, I, I never reach out. Like I, I, I get so much anxiety, even mm -hmm. when I like want to react to somebody's story, especially if it's somebody that like has never reacted to mine. Mm -hmm. And it's just cause like, I don't know, like, I don't want to bother somebody. Right. I like, I, I have all those anxieties. So mm -hmm. I am officially on this podcast, giving you permission. If you're listening and have that anxiety to reach out to me in spite of it, because you can know that I 
would feel the same way. So we're in this together, mm -hmm. right? And I'll pro I promise that if I don't know the answer, I will point you in the direction of somebody who does or a resource. And if I can't, if I don't have those, I will find one for you. Like mm -hmm. the goal of me as a bred Instagram account was, you know, was never to become like the most successful like thing I've ever worked on. Like mm -hmm. I am so grateful to everyone that follows me. And I have to say, thank you so much to you. You've like three times you've lumped me in to these bread accounts oh, that I feel I mean, are so way far beyond what I do. And I, just, I don't, I just really appreciate you saying that my bread is beautiful. It really makes me feel good. Um, because yes. you know, I, I a whole folder, uh, on my phone of like mm -hmm. photos where I'm, that I just look at and I'm like, I could do this better. I could like, it's, yeah, it's that just, one's not you know, good enough. That one's not good enough. we're all, we're, we're, we're all older. struggling. Right. So yeah. hit me up. That's thing. Number one. Thing number two is pick a place and start, right? That is a mm. huge deal. I mean, Definitely. come on. We all remember when we was in fourth grade and, every, and then the, the, the guy comes into class or whoever, the, and they're like, you got to pick an instrument. And everyone's like, what? And they're like, you got to pick an instrument. And then you, you're like, okay, I don't know, trumpet, I guess, right? And then one recess <laughs> a week. Right. We remember right. public school. One recess oh, a yeah. week, you go to Miss Morrison's room and she teaches band. Right. And mm -hmm. when you're in fourth grade, that is it is terrible. Like it's terrible. Think about mm -hmm. and think about how when you're in like then like a year later after doing that once a week and your parents forcing you to like squeak out, you know, one note over and over at home. And then like mm -hmm. a year from there, you can play like Ode to Joy. Right. Right. <laughs> you don't right. you don't remember the year in between mm -hmm. there because that year wasn't you sitting practicing Ode to Joy on your little fourth grade clarinet. It was you going to school and eating dinner and going to recess and playing with your friends and sometimes having to practice clarinet. Right. Mm -hmm. So th there is no such thing as a process that you can just pick up and learn. That's why it's a process. You can pick mm -hmm. it up and start it. Right. So find a place to start. Like you said, you made a really good point a minute ago. There's there are so many resources out there and it's hard to tell sometimes which ones are good, bad, right and wrong. I mean, man, who cares? Right? <laughs> Just do right. it. <laughs> I mean, right? Like it was like that you know, it was like a year ago that the government was like, "Yeah, by the way, UFOs is real. We got all that." And everyone was like, "Man, I knew that." <laughs> Everyone's was like, like, we, we didn't knew that. Tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. you, we come on. Like, you really, you, you, we all knew UFOs was real until the government said it. Right. And then, there, and then we were mm -hmm. like, yeah, we, we seen the pictures. Even if, even if you were somebody who was like, no way there's UFOs, right. then they were like, okay, well, I guess it's real. Right. We don't, mm -hmm. you, and so you really value which book you're going to check out of the library has one paragraph different than the other. Then get them both. Right. Get them right. both. And pick try one. both recipes. Yes. Yeah. If and the it, recipes are different, try both recipes. And if one works better than the other, boom, you got your starting point. Right. It's like, Whoa. and you know, yeah, that is definitely, uh, you know, that's me saying that in 60 seconds. And it definitely feels mm -hmm. way harder when you've got all the books spread out and you're like, which one do I choose? So here's mm -hmm. what I would recommend because like, I do have a recommendation. If you get to that point where you're like, nah, Asher, you're too crazy. I, I like, I don't take that advice. I can't pick. I need more. I need more information. Pick the oldest one. Go to, go to the library, look at the bread section, find the book. That's just called like bread in like black embossed writing on like a thing with no slip cover. <laughs> and it's like bread by John Johnson. Right. From and the 40s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the forward and it's in like typewriter font and it's like, yeah. And it's like, you know, recipe one bread mm -hmm. recipe two rustic bread recipe three <laughs> french bread i'm serious right. pick oh, yeah. that one then 100%. because that one is going to be the you know essentially going to be the most straightforward right mm -hmm. because it's going to have been written in a time when it was one of the only books on bread mm -hmm. there are problems with this strategy for instance if you go back even a couple years, it is very hard to find any books like that that are written by women, BIPOC folks, mm -hmm. any, any marginalized identity or community, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just acknowledge that real quick, right? Mm -hmm. So 
get a new one too, right? I'm just saying, you know, there's that that's what I would recommend only because yeah. you're going to be looking at a straightforward recipe because I mean, there it, it didn't, you know, you couldn't just submit your book to a million publishers online, right? You know, but yeah, you know, so that's that, that's 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 what I would have to say on that right there. Those are my two big tips. Hit me up um, or anyone <laughs> and pick a place yeah. and start. Yeah, I mean, Cultures for Health, I think, is also um, a great place. Yes, to, exactly. To no, you know, this like podcast, we, the Sourdough Podcast. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, I mean, like we we answer customer questions all the time, and some of those questions get directed my way if our customer experience team doesn't know. You know, so I mean, in the most real sense, like reach out to someone who you think would know. Um, you know, we have like a Facebook group, there's plenty of ways to kind of reach out. And I know that it can be nerve wracking. Like you're right that I think people find it nerve wracking because they see these people that are so good and they're like, Oh, I'm never going to be on their level. Like, I don't want to waste their time, but like waste our time. That's what we're here for. That's what I'm yeah. here for. You know, we wouldn't spend hours a day on Instagram if like, you know, if it didn't mean something, else. if it didn't yeah. mean something, if you we know, didn't like, help people. there's like one bread account that has like a million followers and it's like not really a bread account. I mean, I could be totally wrong here, but like overall the, the most followed bread accounts are, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands of followers. This mm -hmm. is not the same as, you know, hitting up whoever, you know, your favorite right. DJ while they're, you know, playing at the club you're at and they have, you know, 2 million yeah. followers. It's like, we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna see the message. Like that's, that's mm -hmm. why, you know, like, I don't know, they, they, ain't, they ain't handing out vice cooking shows anymore. So if we're still here on Instagram, chances are we want to be it. here. Yeah. yeah, let's chat. Let's start that conversation. I mean, that's like, that's why I love talking to people like you and like, you know, the people that I've talked to in the past on our podcast is just getting that, that community together and getting all of everyone's opinions and thoughts. You know, sometimes I ask the same questions, but sometimes I get different answers, you know, and I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to reach out to as many people as you want or feel like you need, because we're all going to have a little bit of a different answer too, right? Like you said earlier, like it's, it's your own individual journey. And I'm sure like my sourdough journey has looked very different from yours. You know, like I came from baking in high school and an educational course to, to where I am now, you know, where it's being like, a literal mm -hmm. fermentation specialist, <laughs> right? You right. know, like that's, which is pretty sick, by the way. Like that's Thanks. that's cool. It Thanks, is. That's cool. Yeah. See, that's yeah. the dream. I think that really is the dream of, and, and you know, if if you know those of us who are in the food world, but not, but but like aren't trying to go like be a chef because that's because we're aware that that's not our calling or not our calling mm -hmm. now or we're not built for whatever that is, right? That's kind of the dream is to get to the point where it's like, no, I'm good enough at my thing that mm -hmm. you can hire me to help you be good at your thing that's pretty oh, yeah. cool yeah i mean i've worked like i've i've studied fermentation relentlessly like i've done it since i was 15 or 16 you know i'm 25 now so i've been doing it for years and i just keep I keep finding myself in the spot that's what i love about cultures for health specifically is like it's not just sourdough, it's all fermentation. You know, like I've touched so many ferments here and I feel like sometimes one ferment kind of feeds like ideas for another. Like sometimes I'll be yep. working on one project. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I could do this other project a similar way. Or maybe like if I tried this part of this process with this project, I would get a better result. So like it really is like all learning experience and adventure. Like, you know, I am technically like the in-house fermentation specialist, but like, I definitely don't know as much as someone like Sandor Katz who has been doing it. I think he's been fermenting right. for almost like 40, 30, 40 years, something like that. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not on his level, but you know, it's an individual journey for all of us. We're all here. We're all learning. We're all educating each other. You know, like I'm, I wouldn't be offended if the customer came in one day and educated me on something I didn't know, you know, right, we talked to, sure. yeah, we talked to, um, Rombu, uh, Rombu, Rombu, um, the kombucha company a couple of weeks ago and we talked about vinegar eels. I have never had a problem with vinegar eels. So like, I, like, that was a new concept to me, you know? And so I think in every situation we can, we can learn something from each other, which is why I love these podcasts. I knew a guy years ago, um, who it was a, he was a really 
I don't know. He was he was an interesting guy, right? But he was like a business person, like a very very business person. You, we all know those mm -hmm. people, just mm -hmm. like different businesses, right? And he always mm -hmm. said that you know that your business is good and has good people and good minds if people are coming in who know more than you do. Because right. like because the you know the surface level thought is like, "Oh, my customer is trying to tell me what to do." And it's like, "No, no, no. That the customers that know more than you do trust you and your mm -hmm. your knowledge and situation to understand yeah. that they also know about it and that they're helping you. And you know, yeah. it's like I was like 23 when I knew this person. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a big mind blower for me. I was like, whoa, you know, you know when you're 23 and you have several yeah. big like, oh, I can't just talk any volume in the laundromat. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you have some, you have some big life realizations around them, but that was a big mm -hmm. one, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think also to say, to speak to what you were saying about, you know, it's like people's experience, just years and years of experience. I mean, I don't, there's that quote, like practice doesn't make perfect. It makes permanent good practice makes perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. Which I right. mean, my, I don't know who said it and it's kind of a chunky quote, but at the end of the day, it makes a lot of sense, don't it? You know, it's like mm, at the, if you've definitely. been practicing for four decades, you probably know how to practice really well. Right. So like your fourth decade of practice has got to be worth, you know, there's no way to really quantify it. But, you know, what I'm oh, saying it's like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, there's there are things you're going to glean from from practicing at that level that cannot be accessed, you know, outside of luck or, you know, help when you're starting out. And that can feel mm -hmm. intimidating too, you know, like, yeah. I mean, like we, we were just talking, right? Like we were just back and forth and about like, yeah, you know, it's amazing and it's a process and we're always learning. And, but I also can remember a time when I was starting with sourdough that I was mm -hmm. so sick of every podcast and article and informational thing that I listened to getting to that point and going like, isn't it amazing? And it's a beautiful process and you just gotta be down to do it for years. And if you fail, don't be hard on yourself. And it's like, that's a lot easier to talk about on the other mm -hmm. side of that fence, right? Right, right. And so, you know, like I have a whole page on my website, um, mm -hmm that is it's like a faq page and it's got like five faqs on it and then a whole paragraph that i wrote about practice because mm -hmm. the number one question i and i feel like many many people get asked uh, you know on food instagram in general is essentially how do i make my food look like your food and right. the answer is you have to practice until you can do that Right. And mm -hmm. that answer sucks. That answer sucks. That's it the same as me saying, yeah. it's the same as me handing you a clarinet <laughs> and right now and going one recess Play a week. Let's yeah, go. <laughs> for 15 minutes a week. Come to my house. I'm going to teach you. Do, 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 do. Right. And then in a year, you might be able to crank out Ode to Joy. Right. That right. is not an appealing concept. And mm -hmm. you have to be down with that if you're going to get into this and the thing that should make that less scary is that the only reason that i think that it seems so intimidating is because over the past several years bread making and sourdough and fermentation has become popular on social media in a way that it wasn't previously and so mm -hmm. there's the fomo Right. You got the FOMO. You mm -hmm. don't want to post bread that doesn't look like the perfect bread, just like right. you wish you could post a photo at the club when you're going to bed <laughs> because you're a reasonable person. Right? right. And we all have different lives. So mm -hmm. the reality is, is you got to you just got to acknowledge that we start stuff all the time. Right. We mm -hmm. all do it. Right. We all go, you know what? I hate that wall. I'm going to go to Home Depot and get the boards, you know, and do the thing that people are doing and try it. And mm -hmm. you do it knowing that you might hate it. Right. Yeah. You get to Home Depot and you go, well, I'm not going to get the super nice paint because if I hate it, I'm just going to paint it back. Mm -hmm. Like, wait, wait, you done carpentry before, cuz? Really? I mean, maybe. Like, I don't know. It's like, I'm just saying. <laughs> How many times throughout our lives do we decide I'm going to start something that I don't necessarily know how to do and I'm going to see it through to the end. There's no right. reason bread should be any different. 
or fermentation in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it and it it's something that needs time to be seen through to the end. Like it's not something, you know. I think I think like when people don't. Um, when people pick something up and they're not instantly good at it, when they don't instantly get that that beautiful loaf, it's just kind of like, okay, well, I did it, I tried, that was fun, moving on. But like, you learn more from your failures than you do your successes, and you just Absolutely. gotta keep. You just gotta keep rolling. Um, and if it's something that you enjoy, like if you really love sourdough bread, like find what motivates you. Like find what motivates you internally to keep going, and just keep going. Like there there's places there's people there's all kinds of resources to um to to get going and to figure it out and to do it right and to you know manage your waste and your loss and all of that kind of thing you gotta find your fun you gotta find your way to have fun with it like uh there's a mm -hmm. book called free play by a dude named steven nakmanovich which is like a cool name um, yeah. So like, it, it's not that long a book. So I mean, anyone who's listening, who's like into reading, this book has nothing mm -hmm. to do with bread. Um, it's it's a book about play, right? And how, you know, play is a fundamental part of humanity and our development, and our growth, and how mm -hmm. and, and how we how we how we lose play, and and how mm -hmm. we how we ostracize play from our adult lives. Right. right. And the, the big point of this book is that you if you cannot find a way to play while you're doing what you're doing, chances are you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So if you, yeah, you have if, to enjoy it, if you're not having fun playing with sourdough bread, mm -hmm. I don't try. But you really want to try sourdough, play a different way. Try cookies, mm -hmm. try yeah. pastries, try Kakasha. Uh, Try crackers, you know, like try it doesn't anything. have to. Yeah, it doesn't have to be just like your standard everyday. Look, food did your you see on did your sourdough yeah. starter not work out? Well, uh, Josh was on last time, and that I mean, that's another guy who will almost always like. I think he's always responded to me. Mm -hmm. He's super nice, and he and he's got tons of resources too. It's like there's there's always going to be you know resources to point you in the direction that you feel like you could have fun. Cause if you're not having fun, I mean, and you're trying to force yourself to do it anyway, come on. Right. Everybody's been on a merry-go-round too long. <laughs> gotta get off happens. or change the pace. Yeah. You gotta get off or change the pace. Otherwise you're going to feel gross later. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to take us a quick different direction. Not so quick, but I'm going to take us a different direction. I feel like we've Flip been it. a little off topic, but like I'm good with it. Um, you okay so let's start with this i don't know you probably do know but last year when covid hit sourdough just like it took off right like everyone started making sourdough bread everyone started talking about it doing it everyone was working from home we had all of this free time i guess you could say so all of the people who saw all those beautiful loaves on instagram and were like oh i want to try it they they started trying it and they started doing it what do you think um like, what do you think triggered that? Like, do you think it was COVID that triggered it? Do you think there's, it was just like a compounding, you know, like all the, all the forces coming together at once to kind of like lead up to this moment. You know, you talked about like sourdough has been on the rise for a little while. Do you think like, it's kind of just like been this one big uh, lead up moment and do you think it'll continue? Like, do you see yourself being the sourdough dude for like another 10 years? Do you see people continuing on that trend? Um, and wanting to continue to learn sourdough and continue to learn bread and continue to learn, I guess, fermentation in general. Do you see, do you think, do you see trends in that direction? What I would call the right direction, but that's because I like fermentation and I'm right. always going to be like biased towards fermentation. But personally, right. the like, more people fermenting, the better. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's my thought process from like a pr food preservation, you know, we waste billions of tons of food every year you know so my idea is and sandra katz has talked about this too of food preservation and fermentation are really the way to go to help feed our society mm -hmm. in the future do you think that like sourdough has a role in that and do you think like this whole phenomenon of what happened last year like yes it probably did blow up because of covid but do you think they're all related and that this trend is going to continue and that like people should definitely be jumping on the bandwagon. 
Um, well, I'll say for, I'll, I'll just, I'll say this first is, I, I, I mean, I, I got the Instagram name sourdough dude just because I was the first guy to get it right. There mm -hmm. are a couple other sourdough dudes around on Instagram, uh, who were really cool. Like, and it's just mm -hmm. with different like versions of the name. Um, and like, I, you know, I, I love that. Like I've become like the sourdough dude. Like that's just, I love yeah. that. I lucked into that. I, I remember when I mm -hmm. typed it in and I was like, Oh my God, this is available for real. All right. I'm going to get you it. I get this. Okay, yeah. It's the only, like so many people, the only reason I made a bread Instagram is because, mm -hmm. well, I mean, at the time when I got into it, I had a bunch of friends who were having kids. So it's like, you know how that goes. All of a sudden you're just like <laughs> hiding a bunch of people from your feed. Cause all your, you just, your feed is only their children. And yeah. I didn't want to do that with all my bread. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, I guess I'll just make a little Instagram account so I can keep track of what I'm doing. Right. I feel like that's how mm -hmm. many people's hobby Instagrams that turn into more, you know, start. So Real, I, I'll yeah. be the sourdough dude as long as people want me to be the sourdough dude. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I think it, I think it's fun. You know, I, I am an artist, right? This is not like a, some performance art project. Like I, I very much care about food. I grew up, like I said, I grew up, you know, in the, with grocery business family and, you know, food is very important to me and feeding people is like, you know, a big way that I show love and stuff. So, you know, this is not a performance as the sourdough dude, like this is me, right? It's mm -hmm. just like, it just so happens to be the the name I chose and, and it, you know, and it stuck, um, you know, but I, I, I'd like to stick with it. You know, I mean, I joked about Vice not giving out cooking shows later, but like, man, if I could get like a show as the sourdough dude, where I could go around and like highlight bakeries that are run by like, not so like cool. white, white guys, right? Like, you know, like that, that would be a real mm -hmm. use of the platform. You, you feel me? Because it's like, I am an mm -hmm. artist and I do want to connect with people. And, you know, that's, I, I feel like if, if you're a white guy with a platform, that's, that needs to be part of your responsibility. So it's like, I, I think it would be really cool to turn the sourdough dude into something a little bit bigger, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. That's just me thinking. Let's answer your real mm -hmm. question about the, you know, it taken off. I think if you ask anyone who's been on bread Instagram since before the pandemic, they'll, they'll, they'll probably agree that like, it was already on the rise before the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, for several years, you know, like right. it's, the thing is, is it's the internet, right? The internet has pockets for everything. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of when that pocket becomes popular, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I think that part of it is because it's it's a time consuming process and it's, you know, it's multi step and it responds to your actions. I mean, think about how many people got pets during the pandemic. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not saying sourdough is as much responsibility as a pet, right? But, but it it's be. close, you know, it, it takes, right. it takes regular care, it responds to your actions. And if you don't care for it, it won't do well, right? So I think that that was part of it is I think that people in general, when we're unstimulated, because we live in a society, a capitalist society that is, just, you know, that's structured around wage labor, right? And I'm not going to get off into a big political mm -hmm. thing. But like, this is, you know, this ain't political, like, this is true, you know, like, it doesn't matter what side you're on, like, we, we all mm -hmm. seen it from the pandemic, like our society collapses if the wage labor doesn't happen, right? And the, the economy, all the rich people's money starts to collapse and then they start to freak out and, you know, and now, now we're here with a lot of badness going on around wage labor, right? So I think that part of it was that everybody kind of realized like, oh my God, like I'm a living, breathing human 15 hours a day if I actually, have the time and space to get my work done in the amount of time it takes it to get it done. Or if I don't have to go to work because the government reasonably can provide for sectors of our society, right? I think that people realized, oh God, like, what am I going to do? You know, I got I, like, I need to do things though, because like, if you know, you can only watch so much Tiger King, <laughs> and that, that shows pretty messed up as it is, you know, it's like after a while you either finish it or you go, I don't want to watch this anymore. I don't like this. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I smoke right. a cigarette with a gas can and a room full of gas cans. This is bad news. So, you that know, I think that was part of it. 
And I think mm -hmm. that the other part of it is that the results are tactile. You know what I mean? Who doesn't love that? Mm -hmm. You go to the fair, you right. pop a balloon, you get a plushie. You go to the store, mm -hmm. you know, you're you're getting the, you know, you're getting the bulk food, you pop an M&M, right? It's part right. of it, you know? And so when you mm -hmm. have a hobby or a pastime or even a temporary focus that results in this thing that you can touch and feel and smell and taste, that's a really gratifying result from your work. Mm -hmm. And in a time where, you know, you seen the Simpsons episode where Lisa, you know, does, where they don't have to go to school and Lisa starts having a panic attack. And so they just write an <laughs> A plus on a piece of paper and show it to her. She's like, oh. yeah, I think that was truly part of it. I really do. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that was a little bit of a part of it as we realized, oh, God, like, what am I going to do? I want to do something. And it mm -hmm. resulted in really beautiful stuff, which was people sharing bread with their families and communities. Mm -hmm and sharing knowledge of this pastime. So mm -hmm. honestly, I think it just got lucky, man. You know, I think it got lucky. Do I think that in 20 years, sourdough is going to be what Pokemon now is bigger than it ever was 20 years ago when it was already mm -hmm. the biggest thing in the world? I mean, who am I to say? Do I think that you're probably right in, th in saying that hopefully people do continue on and it becomes more like household knowledge? Yeah, I think that that's probably pretty likely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's going to become more of a thing where it's not that everybody is just fermenting, but I think it's going to be like every family has somebody who knows how to make good bread. Every family is going to have somebody mm -hmm. or a cousin who makes good kombucha. And right. it's going to get to the point where in the same way that like my dad taught me how to handle pizza dough, it might just be that along with that passed down knowledge or, you know, however you get it, you get taught like, how to feed a starter to make your pizza dough. But then still later, you got to figure it out. I don't know. Is yeah. that a good answer? <laughs> That's yeah, kind of my I thought. think it's um, like going off of what you were saying. I think it's also kind of exciting for people on the other side of fermentation, like people like us who have been doing fermentation since before the pandemic, who have been making sourdough since before the pandemic, like people could have chosen anything. You know what I think? You know what I'm saying? Like people could have done anything with that free time, and they chose to like to spend that time on sourdough. They chose to turn into fermentation, and I think that's like thrilling in a sense of it. It makes me like happy to know that there are people out there who are interested in preservation. You know, For preservation sure. of practices, preservation of food, preservation of like family tradition, like all of those things. Like I think it's really it's nice to see that people did turn to sourdough and they did turn to fermentation because they could have turned to other things. So to me that, that kind of like, it, I don't know, it enlivens you. Like, I don't know if that's a word. I totally like, agree. No, I totally <laughs> You know what totally I mean? Like agree. it makes you, it, it reminds you that there's people yeah. out there who truly do want to do it as much as you do, who like are in it just like you're in it, who want to try it and maybe like they can't fit it into their everyday lives. But as soon as they get the opportunity, they do it. And, you know, that's why I always ask people like, how do you fit this into your everyday life? How do you fit this into your schedule? Because I think that's really what stops a lot of people. And I think that's what for sure the pandemic was good for. Like, if you want to say anything, it was good a came great out of it, like allowing people that that opportunity to pick up skills and practices and things they enjoy that they wouldn't necessarily have had time for. And I think it's, I think it's exciting to see people turning to its fermentation when they kind of turn towards the TV, like the for TV sure. would have been great, you know? So I 100% I agree with you that I think, I think if nothing else, like that alone speaks to the, the continuation of, like fermentation was a growing thing, you know, like it was a really, really big deal thousands of years ago when refrigerators were a thing, you That's know, not say. even we're thousands of years ago. Some right. Of the it could oldest be oldest methods yeah. of not just food preservation, but food making in general. Like these are mm -hmm. fundamental human methods of making food and preserving food. It's, yeah. it's silly not to utilize them. You know, there's no need to mm -hmm. fix what ain't broke. Right. So going off of that, um, kind of like a little bit going to the side too, but, um, you kind of just talked about how, like, you would love to have like a sourdough show. Is that in your mind, the next step, you know, like for me or for a listener, we see someone who bakes a great consistent loaf every time, you know, you've got it figured out for yourself. 
what are the next steps for someone like you who, you know, for, uh, you know, we're all not masters, but like as much of a master as you, as you feel like you could be and, you know, something that's ever evolving and is alive and ever changing and has a whole mind of its own. Where do you, where do you see yourself going? Like, where does, where does the journey continue? Because I feel like sometimes people get that look and they're like, cool, great, done, did it, bye. What is the, like, what are the next steps? Like, do you want to try other fermentations or is like sourdough really just like your focus and you want to expand more on that? You know, talk to us about well, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely part of my life now. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's something you've, you've said a couple times, and I think I, I really agree with you. Is that like it's you know it's one thing to have an entire conversation about i you know ideas of practice and getting over the you know the the mind sort of block of like that the big deal that it is you know. Mm-hmm. But I think that the, that the way that you've said it a couple times is really better than any way I've said it is that practice really just leads to you. No, seriously, because practice leads to you putting it, becoming a part of your everyday life. You Mm -hmm. know, it's like, because, you know, it's, it's only daunting to think, to think about practicing something a lot. If you're thinking about it in terms of that, where if, as if you're thinking about it in terms of, it's just another thing that's part of your life, it becomes way less daunting. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any getting away from sourdough or fermentation or anything like that mm-hmm. um, for me. I, I, I'd love to have a show just because I'd love to, you know, I, like I'm a performer at heart, you mm-hmm. know, and, I've, and I, I used to be an educator as well. That's, that, that was my previous, so I, I've, I've done a lot, but I was an actor, then I was a special education uh, IA in, a, in an elementary classroom for several years, and now I'm mm-hmm. doing other stuff. But the point is, is I'm, you know, fundamentally I'm a performer, and a, mm-hmm. and a nurturer, you know, and, and a sharer. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the goal with the sourdough dude has always been to, you know, once I got to the point that I recognized that I was getting stuff that I didn't get when I was starting and other people needed help with it in the same way I did. My only mm-hmm. goal has ever just been to share my information that I figured out, like I have been this whole time, the way I talk, right. I ain't saying that mm-hmm. any cookbook isn't written by a normal person. I'm just saying sometimes you got to hear just a guy, right? Like, <laughs> just a dude, just, just a sourdough you know, dude. <laughs> or, right, straight up, you know, I mean, t- just to be so clear, doesn't have to be a guy, but like the the, the point right. I'm getting at is like just, just some, some random person Someone. who's mm-hmm. just going to tell you what's up. That's mm-hmm. helpful. You know, that's why, you know, my it's videos. Inspiring. Well, thank you. God, that, thank you so much. But that's why my videos are so all over the place. And I'm yelling and cussing and mm-hmm. throwing stuff is because that's how you are in your kitchen. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not trying to put on a, you know, a performance. I'm trying to show you how I figured out how to make the thing. So it would be really cool to have a show. I think that would be amazing. And like I said, I think that I could really use that platform to amplify voices and advocate for uh, people who are not as readily handed platforms as people who look like me. But, Mm -hmm. you know, that that would be like an amazing result of all this. Uh, You know, a more tangible next step, you know, for me is I'm starting to slowly work with restaurants um, and Mm -hmm. help them. So like, for instance, I I recently and I don't I don't want to say too much because it's, you know, obviously it's like business right but like Mm -hmm. i I recently you know got to help mentor some folks in another country um about how you know essentially about making sourdough pizza in Mm -hmm. some of the styles that are more typical to like new york and stuff because that style of pizza really doesn't exist you know in the part of the world that these folks wanted to open up this pizza place so like that helping helping them do that was a dream come true that is mm-hmm. like that, that, that was actually like, you know, a real deal moment where I was like, I, this is important. Right. Mm-hmm. So my, my real next steps are to just keep getting better at, you know, my bread and pizza dough crafts so that I can get to the point where I can help people, you know, incorporate them because it's not a trend anymore. Right. It's not a trend anymore. Like this is, mm-hmm moved into the mainstream in my opinion and the Mm -hmm. reason that i say that is because there's like been at least two 
seasons of shows that have, that are now, you know, did a season and are now canceled where somebody goes around to bakeries, one of which was mm -hmm. actually, I think this one baked with Tom Papa, the comedian might not be mm -hmm. canceled. Either way, that one was that one was great because mm -hmm. uh, Tom Papa, if, if he's a hilarious comedian, he right. was also one of the first like he was yeah. like real deal first wave of like Instagram mm -hmm. sourdough people like back when yeah. like Maurizio and folks were just getting, you know, moving from the blog world into the social media world, you know, so mm -hmm. it's like the, the you know, the sourdough community has is 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 wide and crazy and, and, and all, all over the place and far reaching. Right. Um, you know, so I, I think that as cool as it would be to be like some famous sourdough person, I think it would be much more, I think it would be much more valuable and in the end, way more fun to actually be able to be so ready with my knowledge and skills that I can bring them around the world to different people in different environments and different kitchens with different limitations and figure out how to make it work. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's really that's really been my goal and that's like i i just want to keep doing that bigger and better you know what i mean i just want to help i just want to help people make good food so that if i can't make it for them they can make it for them right <laughs> like, you know what yeah. i mean oh yeah i mean that's that's why i'm here and that's what's kept me at cultures for health for such a long time is i feel like you know, the base of customer that we reach, I really would not find anywhere else. Like, you know, I was talking about like the span of ferments that I have, you know, we have so many ferments here, but at the same time, like the amount of people that we reach, I really feel like I have a unique opportunity to, you know, do things like a podcast and answer customer service questions and reach those people in a way that like, if I was a small mom and pop kombucha shop, I wouldn't be able to reach as far as, as I, as I would like to reach. Like, I think those Absolutely. shops are really important for local education, but I think like good general knowledge and understanding and like hearing different people's stories. Like I really find that um, Cultures for Health is really great. Yeah. And I That's like to think great. that like we're doing a good job at it. And I think for the most part we are, and it's really nice. Um, I like, think you are. I think you are because, <laughs> big, well, cause I, I hadn't heard, I heard about y'all when Josh, did the podcast. And I was like, Oh, mm -hmm. well, let's check this out. And I was like, Oh, cool. Oh like, this gosh. is interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you hit me up and I was like, sweet. Yeah. I was like, this is, <laughs> yes. I was like, that's awesome. Because the thing is, is, you know, the, to touch on the second part of your question, which was like, do I want to branch out, do other stuff? I do. Um, mm -hmm. if you, if you, if you or anybody listening can't tell from this podcast so far, I am all over the place. One of my favorite mm -hmm. things to do is post my unread message count to my Instagram story because it's often like in the 70s or 80s because I just, I can't, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just so all over the place. So like, right. I really do want to get into, um, I, I really want to get into yeast waters. Uh, Bisham the baker who I mentioned, I should actually say that's his Instagram Mm -hmm. actually chef Bisham. Um, he is a chef. Um, mm -hmm. he does a lot of cool stuff with yeast waters. Like literally he'll throw like apricot and water in like a washed out plastic Coke bottle and just set it on the mm -hmm. counter for a couple days and then come back and he'll open it and it'll just, it'll Mentos Coke jet. And it's like that, that looks really cool. Yeah, so yeah. I've started experimenting mm -hmm. a little bit with that. I definitely do want to, you know, I was looking through y'all's SCOBY stuff and I was like, man, mm -hmm. sooner or later, I got to get into kombucha because I have given starter to people over the years so that they can mm -hmm. convert it into SCOBY, which blew my mind when I found out that was a thing. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, but like, I guess they're not converting it, but they're using it to to help the environment create the SCOBY. Like they're yeah. using sourdough starter to grow. Yes. <laughs> to like, to start the fermentation yeah. process. They're, they're like the, the I guess, because they're taking like a small amount of it and sort of just using it as like a lactic acid kickstart. And then, mm -hmm. and then beyond that, I didn't understand, but I really want to find out because apparently the SCOBY <laughs> that one lady that uh, made with my starter is like, still going after like two years and has been split like all over Seattle. Starting a SCOBY from Sourdough Discard? Who knew? Thanks for joining us and be sure to stay tuned for an incoming part two of the Sourdough Dudes journey. 
into the world of fermentation. Don't forget about the Cultures for Health 2022 New Year giveaway as well. We're giving away a bundle of our brand new holiday spice and cranberry kombucha kit, live kombucha culture and artisan sourdough kit. To enter, you can click the link below or find it on our Instagram or Facebook page. You don't want to miss out on this giveaway. Once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.